Hey everyone, and welcome to chapter three. So in this video, we are finally going to code in a motor and get started learning how to spin that motor. So the first thing that we need to do is have a conversation, right? So WPI Lib, right? You might be thinking like, wow, it's this great class and it's got everything I need, right? So I could just be like, oh, you know, motor, 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 my motor equals new motor. But that's not quite the case, right? Because unfortunately, even though WPI lib is cool and it does a lot of things for us, it doesn't really include the main motor controller that we need to work for, right? So we said in the beginning that we're gonna be using the CTRE API, right? Now CROSS CTRE stands for Cross the Road Electronics. And they're a company that makes this motor controller called a Talon FX. All right, Talon FX. Now this motor controller is responsible for commanding motors like a Falcon 500 or more recently a Kraken X60. All right, these are really popular motors that are used in the context, in the context of FRC. All right. Unfortunately, WPI Lib does not have built-in functionality to code these motors. So you guessed it, we need another library, but, but this is not like a standard, you know, sort of, oh, we got to go to WPI lib and like install the whole thing, wait a couple of minutes and like do all the setup nonsense. No, no, no. This kind of library that we're going to be adding is called a vendor dependency, all right? Vendor dependency. And in this vendor dependency, we're going to basically get all the software that we want to code a Talon FX, all right? That's the motor controller, right? So you're wondering like, okay, how exactly do I get this vendor dependency? Well, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is head over to Google, all right? So let me open that up real quick. And then you're gonna type in Phoenix Vendor Library, all right? And then you're gonna to go to this CTR Electronics link, all right? So, oh, sorry, that is not it. Uh, okay, let's, let's see if we have Phoenix Six Vendor Library. That'll do it, that should do it. Yeah, there we go. All right, installing Phoenix 6. So we're gonna do Phoenix 6, we're in an FRC context, right? We're gonna do it online, all right? And basically, you're just gonna to copy this link right here, okay? Let's see if I can do that, there we go. So copy that link, all right? And then head back to VS Code, and then you're gonna open the command palette, right? Command Shift P, or sorry, Control Shift P, we're on Windows, um, and then we are going to type in manage vendor, oh, not manager, manage vendor libraries. There we go. WPI lib manager, manage vendor libraries. So go ahead and click that. And then we're gonna install new libraries online. Now it's gonna ask for a URL, right? Well, just paste the URL we just got and go ahead and hit enter. And it says, hey, you just got this new vendor dependency. I wanna build code just to make sure everything's okay. We're gonna go ahead and hit yes. And it's gonna build, all right? Now, while it's building, you might notice that, hey, this vendor dependency folder turned green. Well, look at that. We've got the Phoenix 6 vendor library, and that's exactly what we need in order to code a Talon FX motor controller. It's what we need to make our motor spinning, all right? Now, the people at CTRE, they call their software Phoenix. I don't know why, but they just called it that. And so Phoenix 6 is their latest version, and that's the one we're going to be using, all right? So we built. It's successful. Now we can get started with making our motor object. And it's actually really easy. All you're gonna do is type Talon FX, all right? Remember, that's the name of the motor controller. We're gonna call it my motor for now. Let's see, my motor equals new Talon FX. Now, you notice that there's two constructors, right? We're gonna be worried about this one, right? And it's asking for something called a device ID. Now, unfortunately, this is something that we can't really cover in a simulation environment, all right? So what we're gonna be doing is linking a video. Now you might be wondering, okay, like what is this video about? Like how does this relate to this device ID? So a robot, in a robot, right? It's really common to have the same type of motor. So in this case, we're using a Talon FX motor controller. It's really common to have multiple motors that use the Talon FX motor controller, right? You might have, like for example, in a drive base, right? You might have two motors, right? And those two motors might use the same like brand of motor controller. So in order to distinguish the different motors, right? Cause you might use the same motor on a robot, it's totally fine. But in software, 
In order to distinguish things, we need to assign an ID to each of the motors, all right? And in order to do that, you need to use a Tuner X app, which you installed before. Now, unfortunately, we can't really show you how to use Tuner X properly, so we're gonna link a video for now. This might get updated in the future, but for now, we're gonna link a video from another FRC team that explains really well how to use Tuner X, all right? So take a look at that if you're interested in how to get this device ID. But for the purposes of right now and for simulation, we're just gonna type one, all right? And you really don't need to care about what this ID is if you're working in sim. So if you really don't wanna watch that other video or if you don't have a physical robot to work with right now, feel free to just ignore that video and go back to it later when you're eventually working on a physical robot, all right? So that's it. That is all you need to initialize your motor. It is that easy. That creates a new motor object. But unfortunately, we are not quite done. Right, because even though we created a new motor, we need to actually configure the motor software and what's happening on that motor. Right, we need to reset the firmware and give it our own firmware. Right, we want to give it to our own configuration. We want this motor to work the way we want it to. Right, and remember in Robot Init, this is where we set up our motors. Right, so the first thing that we're going to do is reset the motor to its factory default settings. All right, so let's start with reset the motor to its factory default settings. All right, let's get started with that. And the command to do this is my motor. You're going to get the configurator of the motor, right? And then you're going to hit up, use the apply method and we're going to apply a new talent effects configuration. This is a brand new configuration that gets applied to the motor, all right? So I would like to, instead of writing settings, let's write configuration because that's more technically precise. Okay, now the next thing, and this is more of a safety thing, but these motors can take in a lot of current, okay? The problem with that, when you have a motor taking up so much current, is that the motor might accidentally burn up. And we have had this experience before where we let the current going through the motor be too high. So generally when you're coding these motors up, you wanna limit the current that goes through the motor, all right? And for those of you who don't know what that means, um, really what that is, is limit the flow of electricity that's going to the motor at any given point, all right? That's what we wanna do just to be safe, all right? So the first thing you're gonna wanna do, and let me just add a comment here saying, configure the current of the motor. The first thing you wanna do is create a configuration that basically contains all the limits you wanna put on the current. This is called a current limit config, all right? So we're gonna do var current configuration equals new current limits configs. All right, that's the current limit configuration. Now, the type of current, now this is just technical, you can feel free to ignore this if you don't really care, but we're gonna limit the stator current on the motor, all right? Let me just get rid of this and make this a lowercase o. All right, so we're gonna do current configuration dot stator current limit and set it to 80 amps, all right? And then we're gonna make sure that that current limit is enabled. So you have to set this Boolean, the stator current limit enable Boolean to be true. Now, these are all members of this current configuration, this current limit configs class, all right? Just so you're aware, all right? Now, the next thing we wanna do is just refresh the motor's configuration, right? We wanna make sure it's ready to receive a new current configuration. So it's gonna be my motor dot get configurator that, get, that gets all the configurations on the motor. And we're gonna refresh it with this current configuration. All right. Now the final thing we're gonna do is actually apply the configuration. So we're gonna get the configure all the configurators on the motors and we're gonna apply this current, con oop, not that, current configuration, lovely. Okay, so this is refreshing and then applying the current configuration. And if I haven't said it already, I highly encourage you comment code during this first part of the tutorial just so you understand what's going on. Okay, cool. So now we've safely limited the amount of current flowing into the motor so that way our motor doesn't blow up on accident, all right? So what's next? Well, we wanna spin the motor. Now, where are we gonna spin the motor? In teleop periodic, all right? So let's go over to teleop periodic and see, we have our comment from before, motors do stuff here, right? And all it is, is for now, what we're gonna do is set the motor to output at 50% of its speed. So it's gonna be motor dot, oh, sorry, my motor dot set 0 
And if you hover over the method, you'll see a lovely Java doc here that says the parameters, the speed to set. Values should be between negative 1.0 and 1.0. So 0 0.5 should be 50% of your speed. You can also go in the other direction with negative 0 0.5. All right, cool. And that is it. That is all you need to make your motor spin. It's really that simple. It's not too complicated. WPILib and CTRE's library does a lot for us in terms of dealing with the overhead of writing and setting, you know, all of this code for the motor. They handle a lot of that for us, which is great. Okay. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is actually simulating this and seeing the device in code and then actually enabling the robot to see it spin. So we're going to go ahead and enter a command palette and then type in simulate robot code. All right. Then we're going to go ahead and use the real driver station and hit OK. All right, cool. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and open my driver station. I already have it here and you can see I already have a robot connected, which is great. So the next thing, and if I hit enable, disable, and you know, uh, we're happy with that. So now I'm going to go to my talent effects devices and you can see, right? I can see the voltage. I can see what's happening with my motor. So what happens if I hit enable? Well, look at that. We see values change. We see something happening, right? We see something involving the spinning of the motor. Isn't that cool? We see the motor's voltage, the way it's spinning. We see the torque, we see the supply, we see all different kinds of things, right? Isn't this cool? And if I disable the motor, it's gonna turn off. And it's that, it's that easy, all right? So enable, you can see some spinning's happening. Disable, everything turns off. And it's huge, and something to note, like on disable, there is built-in WPI lib code that will automatically turn off all the motors. So you don't have to deal with that. So the expectation is that when you hit disable, all the motors turn off immediately, all right? And that's something you don't have to worry about. It's just a safety feature built into disable. It's that when the robot is disabled, nothing should be moving. That's just a safety feature built in. Just so, you know, in case a robot ever, in, in case you ever lose control of a robot, you quickly hit disable and then, you know, you're good to go. So I hit enable and disable. And we can see the motor spin and then shuts off immediately. And so that is all I wanted to cover in this video. That is spinning a motor. Isn't that cool? So thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we really take it up to the next level and start writing code for multiple motors.